starting to the top right for Team Azubu, uh, we have the former Prime player. It is Azubu Pung Pung. The man with the farting noises. Yep. He's cross position to his opponent. Starting to the bottom left, we have the Star Tail starting player. It is Star Tail Curious. With these starting positions, we'll probably see very standard play. Yeah. And once again, uh, just to mention that for all the people that tuned in a little bit later, we are in the playoffs now. This means that we have a best of nine system, in, in, uh, not a best of seven system anymore. The regular season was all about the best of seven, and now in the playoffs, every single match will be a best of nine. So you have to prepare a lot more players. You have a bit of a bigger map pool that you have to prepare for. Two so new maps, yeah. Exactly. So a lot of strategy goes into this now. You can prepare a lot more snipers for this, and it, that is something that you always have to keep in mind when we go into the day's matches. Exactly. And then teams that have smaller lineups uh, you know, are really hurt by this. But we don't really have any teams like that making it to the playoffs, so shouldn't really see that impact the play. But had we had a team like Prime, for example, uh, go in, which only has really four players they rely on, they would have had a problem with their, their fifth player being missing. No surprises with the build order here, by the way. Both of them are going straight into the hatch first play that we now see. And we have a bit of a win ratio versus the opponent's team. So this is, of course, um, including all the games that they've played in the past, not only relying on the Heart of the Swamp statistics. Yeah. And we do have both players now going into the pool after the slightly delayed hatch. Or not a slightly delayed hatch, uh, the fastest possible hatch. A delayed pool after that hatchery. Yeah. No gas is taken just yet. So this is definitely going to be a little bit of a longer game, at least from the looks of it uh, right now. You have, of course, a couple of choices where you could rely on circling speed and then an attack early on in the game. But on a map like this, we usually see bailing nests coming out for both players, and that can shut uh, the speedling aggression out very, very early in the match. But let's talk a little bit about the statistics that we have for both players in the mirror matchup. If you look at the statistics for Boom Boom offline in Heart of the Swarm, he played nine maps so far and he won five of them, so he has a 56% win ratio. Doesn't really make him the Zerg versus Zerg sniper, but he still has a positive win ratio here. So Boom Boom, traditionally actually a player that, especially in Wings of Liberty, was quite good against Zerg. He was one of the first players who was able to take down ST in a ZVZ after ST established his name as being like the Zerg. The ZVZ master, yeah. who nobody could get past. And yeah, nobody was beating him. Yeah. <laughs> Up to the point where Bungu suddenly emerged in the best of three and took an ST down with the 2-0 and made it look easy at that. But Curious, on the other hand, he also played a couple of games so far in Heart of the Swarm against Zerg, focusing on the offline matches, of course, once again. We have him with 14 games in total, so a few more. He has a 50% win ratio. And he lost his last two matches. He actually lost to Symbol and he also lost to Ragnarok. So both of them roughly at the 50% win ratio mark here in this matchup. So if you look at the statistics, they're definitely evenly matched here. And it's going to be probably a very tense game that we're going to see. Yeah, absolutely so. A bit of an incorrect scout from uh, Curious with his links to the top left. Was hoping to get something done there, get some scouting information, but it's not to be so. Now I'm going to go around and check the correct location as his overlord already saw the bottom right is not where he spawned. The double queen is now out for both players. This is, of course, the one thing that always lines up perfectly well if you can go into a hatch first. When you start the pool afterwards, you can start both queens as soon as the, the pool and the hatch will basically finish at roughly the same time. So you can start the double queen and have it out there on the map. You already see that Juris is starting to be a little bit more defensive than his opponent. He's going into the spine crawler at the front. As I mentioned before, Baneliness is uh, something that most players will get on this map just because there is such a huge ramp to uh, defend. Yeah. But going straight into Roaches is most of the time not the best option. Nice kill here, really good snipe by Curious, seeing this overlord and uh, giving the high ground vision with his own and then taking down the first overlord for Boom Boom. That seems very insignificant at first, but in the early game it can actually screw up your entire build order. If exactly, you 100 minerals lost there it also affects his vision and uh, his production. Both players doing identical builds otherwise here, adding both the evolution chambers, so we're going to see Roach Hydra play, at least initially from these two. and. They're, they're taking their gases very late. They both have them up now. You can see that uh, Boom Boom took his much faster as he's now nearly 300 gas. Roach Warren already coming onto the production tab for Curious. When we started with Wings of, uh, sorry, with Heart of the Swarm, we had actually like mirror list matches most of the time, and sometimes players would go into the 1 1 upgraded Zerg links. That was a very good strategy that you could use. But then when Blizzard decided to nerf the mirror list a little bit by emphasizing the damage that Spore Crawlers deal to bio units, and suddenly players started to shift more in that old school style. 
But we have a bit of a change here. Boom Boom is actually not going for the Roach Burn. Uh, a little bit later here, but he is the one who gets all his upgrades first, and then also the Lair Tech. So with the upgrades, he will be a lot faster, and he's skipping speed here, and that's where, why he is able to get those upgrades faster. Yeah. One thing that's true about what Curious is doing is that he's taking the faster third hatchery, but his upgrades are very late. He's also going to send 18 lings, even 20 lings yeah. out here to try to deny his opponent's third base at the same time. And this kind of sets already the pace of the game. We will see uh, one player trying to be a little bit more defensive. Ooh, actually, Boom Boom is going to lose another Overlord. Those screens are very aggressive on the map here. And with the added Zerg lings that he just started to build, he can actually protect them in case that Boom Boom sends out his own lings to uh, take the queens down. He sees the hatchery with his Overlord. It does die to bring in this information. Um, it's but a hero. It's a hero. You know, many bottoms did this. Uh, and, you know, the links here are going to actually go out and they should be able to force a cancel on this hatchery. He's waiting, he's trying to hide them for a really long time and I like this. Now he goes, he sends them out. He could also snipe some queens at the front of the map as well. But I think he'll go for the straight for the hatchery first. Well, here comes the vision and the links are already on the way. He has to know that they are aiming straight for the third base and the, the roach is immediately trying to rally up there. But there are so many Zerg things, they should be able to force a cancel. There is no possibility to transfuse it just yet, and that's the cancel. And this suddenly gives Curious a bit of an edge, because he will have his third base earlier. Yeah, very true. His upgrades are a little bit behind, but he's going to have the expansion up first. Man, that was a really good trade for him. Cost him a lot of larva to do this, but it's worth it in the end. He starts his infestation pit a little bit faster. And now one of these problems, or one of the problems that Curious might have later, is that Boom Boom could actually hit timings with his upgrades, but he is not starting plus two, plus two right away. Well, there's at least the attack upgrade and there's armor, okay? Just losing a few seconds here, that's fine. Yeah. Because you want to maintain that upgrade lead. Once that Boom Boom identifies that he has that, he might decide to hit a timing here. But for now, of course, he wants to get his own third phase up. And Curious, as mentioned before, he already has a lead. Just the upgrades, that's where he has to be a bit careful. Yeah, very, very careful about that. Needs to make sure he continues to hit those. And with the Infestation Pit, we could see Swarmos come out. Uh, what's your feel on that? Do you think he's just going to get some Infestors a little bit earlier yeah, before Hydras? Yeah, definitely Infestors. He's not going... I cannot see him going to Swarmos here. The Infestors are already being built. That's usually not something that you really try to do in Zerg versus Zerg, especially when you're up against a very mobile army. It's always very dangerous. And on a big map like this, if you have the Swarm host in the middle of the map, you need something to defend them. So they're not the fastest unit. The only thing that I could see with Swarm host, if if you try to hit a timing and you go for a Nidus Network, but on a big map like this, uh, yeah, Swarm Host, I feel not really the right choice. You have just too many ways where you can go past the Locust and try to hit when they're still on the way. So, Infestors here, the choice for him. Playing it a little bit old school, like we had in Rings of Liberty. Yeah. Good Zergling Scout here. Doesn't see a ton, but he will see the Hatchery again that's completely saturated, and also the Roach Count. One of the things I want to point out, though, is that he got three Infestors before he went into Pathogen Clans. And this is also because he knew, he knew already that he, his opponent had one on one upgrades, and he also knew that he took down that third base. So he was like, well, I want to get my Infestors. I would like them to spawn with the Pathogen Clans uh, energy, but you might be tempted to attack me right now because you know very well that you are falling a little bit behind in economy. So let's get those Infestors out a little bit faster, and then I might be able to use them in case that you attack. Yeah. Zerglings are not really useful in this matchup as the game goes longer, so he was trying to just get these in to do some damage, to get rid of them, free up the supply to make more attacking units, but unfortunately for him, he didn't really get anything done. But it still frees up the supply, and here comes that attack you were talking about. And he will hit this with 2-2. Two -two. This is a really nice timing here. Yeah, that's exactly the timing that he was trying to hit. And here come the Infestors into play. He needs to make sure that he pins down ro those Roaches down. In terms of supply, we have Boom Boom in a little bit of a lead. That will further add to his advance that he has. He's waiting for the plus 2, plus 2. He also has the Burrow upgrade. That's something that Curious just now doesn't have. And he is behind in the Roach count. Yeah, he needs to get a Concave set up here. Nicely done. He has the Concave at the ramp. But it looks like this is just going to be a fake. He runs it now with the main army and gets a good position here. Yes. Bungle hits only so, four roaches. Yeah, but still, so far a good job at zoning by Curious, but now Boom Boom decides that it's time to engage. Another Fungal hits home, and this is the time when Curious really has to make this defense work. His plus two attack upgrade is not done just yet. The Fungals are really good, but he needs to get more roaches out there. He needs to get more roaches out. Uh, it looks like Boom Boom is actually pushing through a little bit here. Well, Boom Boom is making those upgrades work, but he doesn't have the numbers at the front. And with all the Infestors, another Fungal could really pin those units down. He's trying to make that Burrow work, but we already have Overseers in the air to scout those units. And Boom Boom is being forced back. He's dropping in supply, and it looks like Curious is held for now. Yep, a few Roaches are going to run into the natural. 
Curious has held that Defender's Advantage really working for him, and also that one key fungal. A few of the fungus he got earlier only hit some roaches, but even that helps a little bit. And now he's making more infestors, trying to get Hydras out, but these roaches in the main base are a little bit annoying. There's also some at his third right now. Yeah, nice queen snipes here by Boom Boom, but immediately the two queens are being rebuilt, and they got a they got a quick check before they were taken out. We have also Hydralists already in the army for Curious, whereas Boom Boom is just now adding the Hydra den. The plus two has been completed for Curious, the attack upgrade. He's going into armor now, but Curious is now in a really good position. Yeah, he 30 really supply is. lead, he has the tech out there, he's already going into the range upgrade. Um, sorry, that's actually Boom Boom uh, Curious. Might already have that range upgrade. I don't think he started it just yet. No, he does not yeah, have it He yet. doesn't have it yet because he was attacked right when his Hydra Den was finishing up. But he is in a really decent spot here. The only thing he's missing is the plus two carapace, which he's building right now. Yeah. It's going to take him some time, but he should be able to defend any aggression that comes. This is a sneaky move here, but he is spotted. He should target the Infestors. Nice. Yeah. Nice, get one of them. But yeah, the Infestors are actually the biggest asset of Curious. And Boom Boom is in a bit of trouble because of that. It's not only the supply advantage that Curious suddenly has, but it's really the army composition uh, that is giving Boom Boom a lot of trouble. Boom Boom is trying to get a fourth base. He has to take a lead somehow. He has to do something. And the fourth base is the only thing that cannot, he cannot come up with right now. But this army is moving in. And with the numbers that Bo Curious has, I'm a little bit afraid for Boom Boom here. Yeah. That doesn't look good. He has more roaches. They are both even in the Hydralis count. This engagement, though, a better position for the Azuma player, Boom Boom, but he's getting fungled here, and there's way too much DPS. The fungal great against the Hydralis already, pinning this army down as well. A couple of volleyballs are entering the game. The Infested Terrans, Warmax, or whatever they are called, are moving in, and this just doesn't look good anymore for Boom Boom. He's yeah. already down uh, 50 supply. Curious is trading really, really nice nicely here and it looks like it looks like Boom Boom may not even survive the next wave of reinforcements. I don't think that he will be able to survive here. That's just too much. And you can see that the overlords are also exposed. He has control of the ramp. There are still two infestors. He's rallying units across the map. He's just losing way too much right now. Yeah. Way too much indeed. 50 supply lead here for Curious and the rest of his reinforcements are about to arrive. Yeah. He's going to have plus two carapace very soon too. Yeah, Boom Boom, that was the only advantage that he had, this extra armor upgrade. But it just is not enough to make up for the discrepancy that we have in numbers here. And now with the armor upgrade finishing for Curious, there is just nothing that goes for Boom Boom anymore. He, he can even the kill these overlords. Team. Yeah, he can kill whatever he wants right now. He has free reign at the Nando. Yep. This is going to be it, guys. This is just the cleaning job that we have here for Curious. He is at 160 supply against 80 at this point, and that's the GG. A Star Tail takes game 